All right, welcome back to the Arroyo Podcast. My name is Griffin. <laughs> I'm Josh. And I'm Dakota. And today, excited for our conversation. We have a few things, or one thing that we're going to react to and then kind of continue on a conversation from this last Sunday yeah. sermon. Grow from God's word. Yeah, but before we do like that, that, I think we should jump in and react to a video. That kind video? of viral this last week. Uh-oh. Does this video what happen means? to involve a men's conference do you want to give yeah give some context for right. it before i just yeah go no ahead. performer we'll shirt. see this is yeah so the video we're reacting Former. to is a big news story we're kind of late to the game but it's because we took because we were week. gonna do this pod last week and we yeah, got we couldn't do delayed. it so we're doing it now and uh but it's a, it's a good piece of cult, christian cultural events right a lot of big news outlets outlets actually reported on it i was, it was a big deal i was like wow and you know and there was another new report on it today right. on new information it like it really kind of has had like kind of continued i think on. we should react to it but i don't even know if we need to necessarily get into the fact of whether or not it's wrong or right i think we talk more about like entertainment as a whole and christianity and yeah like, i like that place in that yeah so the video like we're going to show, it's Mark Driscoll presenting at a conference. This is a good case study. And the context behind it, because you're it not going to really have the context behind it. Mark Driscoll was speaking at a, at a conference, very big conference, yeah. and they had entertainment at this conference. It was an opening act. A lot of conferences, whether it's like Christian conferences yeah. or even like some business yeah, yeah, yeah. conferences too, they have like some form of entertainment to open up the conference. Right. And in this case, this one and really sideways. every year they have something, a sequence of mm, different right. opening acts. Yep. And this is one of their opening yeah. acts. And Mark Driscoll didn't really agree with yeah. their opening act. So, yes. so let's get into what, it. What he had to say and what happened. And uh, a little trigger warning. There's a shirtless man yes. in the video. There is. So, so just wanted to say that. Don't want to put our, a stumbling block for mm-hmm. anybody. Well, let me do this. Um, I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is you see I the video at the bottom. That's the opening act. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say. Uh-oh. The Jezebel spirit has already been here. The room got so quiet. Is that, no. is that picture from the conference? No, that's an old okay. photo. I say that's, that was misleading. Yeah, it was a little misleading. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword. That's Mark. That's Jesus the lead pastor okay. yelling at pastor him. Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. You're done. Yeah. He said you're done. And then he comes onto the stage after he kicks him off the stage in front of thousands of men at the conference. I love that all the guys are just booing this. Boo! Yeah. That's how you know it's an immense conference. Boo, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Come on, guys. Get off the platform. <laughs> That's so awesome. That's awesome. I'd probably be yelling to it. Honestly. Obviously, as was depicted, 
in the video, there was a man that kind of, um, I'd say sexually took his shirt off and then proceeded sure. to do a dance on a pole. Uh, it wasn't acrobatic. Granted, yeah, you know, it was more acrobatic. It, it, it wasn't was sexual acrobatic. in nature. Although I would say it depends on who you ask this. So there's some people the that way, may interpret true. that. Yeah. If you look at the way he took his shirt off, it was a little suggestive. Well, I think it's uh, more theatrical. I just think in general, it's just a bad. It's call. a weird bad thing. Call. It's a very hey, men's weird thing. All men, let's have a dude with his shirt off climbing up a pole with a sword yeah. in his mouth. That's just Here's, weird. It, you know what? It, the well, lesson even is not actually, sexual, I think, in leadership weird. and leadership. It a lot of the times. I, it, it doesn't matter what your intention was. It matters how people interpret what you're doing and the optics of it. Yeah. So maybe they were well-meaning and they just overlooked the fact that some people might look at that and go, hmm, maybe for a Christian men's conference, that's also teaching the Bible, supposedly. Maybe for a men's conference that is teaching the Bible, supposedly, and mm. worshiping Jesus, supposedly. Yeah. Maybe we should rethink whether or not it's fruitful or productive or helpful to the people there to have an opening act that has a man, whether or not it is some kind of circus acrobatic act that is shirtless climbing up a pole. I just don't Who's get how helping? it relates. Doesn't like I understand, matter. like I've seen, we've been to conferences, even at our sure. own high school where they have a guy come up and rip a phone book. Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. or uh, show other whatever feats of strength. Sure. And uh, I mean, that those acrobatics are demonstrations of strength. So I get the relation there, I guess. But I just don't understand I'm what saying. the correlation was to men's conference. You would think that at least the opening act has some sort of like connection to whatever the men's conference is talking about or just like men in general, like. Right. Like ripping the phone book. That's strange. Yeah, like right? I've Men, never been be strong. like, hey, uh, guys, you know, yeah. we're, we're best friends and yeah, yeah, yeah. each other whole lives. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's do a weekend trip. Let's yeah. go to a circus act right. where we're going to see a guy take his shirt off and swallow a sword while he's dancing on a pole. No yeah. man. Like, no dude is like, hey, let me spend that's awesome. my weekend right. doing that. That's right. awesome. Uh, or even, I saw this guy dancing on a pole. It was crazy. Climbed up the yeah. pole. Never said that. Sure, the fact that he had a sword in his mouth at one point. No, it, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's and incredible. his when he was hanging like that, like yeah, that's strength, it's a great for sure. feat of strength. Yes, but it's not something that is like building up the body of believers, and it's not right. something that even I think would be a form of outreach. I don't think an average man that's a non-believer yeah. would be sitting oh, there yeah, going like, "Wow, see. this is what I want to see." Right. Like if you were invited to that event, and you're a non-believer, you're asking questions. I actually. And this is what ultimately happens that it, when you go across the line yeah. is you actually divert from the gospel. You divert right. from the true meaning of what you're trying to do, which is That's to what, there needs to be a men. connection to the gospel. Always. Yeah. I would just say in summary of what they did there and choosing to have that guy do that. And mind you, that was the opening act. So before right. there was any prayer right. or even worship music or a sermon, that was literally the first thing that happened at the conference, which is even makes it even a little bit more bizarre. But I think at worst, this was perverse. And at best, it was just out of touch. Yeah. Yeah. So either way, it, it, was was, a, yeah, it wasn't I mean, a good, good call. Choice. And, you know, as far as Mark Driscoll is concerned, him yeah. getting up and kind of calling it out in front of the conference. Not just out. calling it out. He was calling it out as a demonic spirit. As a Jezebel spirit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Which that's I, quite serious. He did say that this is not a rebuke. This is an observation. And... The, when he was saying that, yeah. it it's not a rebuke, directly, but it was definitely, but it was, but it was a, he was voicing his concern and he seemed grieved by it. He seemed He's very genuine and I yeah. don't doubt his genuineness I, of heart. Um, <clears throat> the pastor that was leading the conference that got up to re remove Mark and he actually rebuked Mark for his rebuke. Yeah. Quoted Matthew 18, which I don't think really fits because Matthew 18, the context there private. is about a, brother sinning against you so that guy did not sin against mark the guy dancing without yeah. a shirt on the pole that was a public thing that wasn't a private thing so matthew 18 doesn't really apply there but also mark probably should have talked to him beforehand anyways just out of yeah. courtesy because the guy was the organizer of yeah. the event 
and it would have just been more wise. And they have for relationship. Him. They have relationship. It would have been yeah. wise for him to do that. And maybe looking back now, Mark maybe wishes that he did do that. But I think he was right in what he was saying and the fact that it was wrong. I don't know if I would necessarily say it was the Jezebel spirit. Right. I think that's maybe taking a little bit too far and maybe assuming a little too much. Yeah. Uh, but it was definitely wrong and weird. Right. It, so it begs the question, what is entertainment's place within the church? Should it ever have a place? Is there a way for as Christians to, to use those things as a means to get to people of the gospel and to get to community. the power of Jesus or community? Like what, what do you guys think? About that? I think entertainment, I actually would relate this to the parables of Jesus. Mm. I think those were just as much. I mean, <laughs> they were first and foremost, obviously teaching incredible truths that Jesus was trying to mm. tell us, but they were also extremely entertaining. That's yeah. what a story is. Yeah. It's to entertain. And then the best stories also teach and mm. show these things. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I think that's where, yeah, I mean the, like at, at best, that's where entertainment should be in, in church. Right. Is there, right. It's a entertaining. parable. It's an illustration. It, it's an illustration. It's a teaching, teaching thing. Like when you tell a story on stage that's funny or or interesting or whatever, relatable. I'm, in that moment, I'm being entertained for sure because I'm 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 forgetting about what's going on in my life right now. I'm I'm into the story. I might laugh. I might do all that stuff. Yeah. But then also, it's teaching me something. It's unlocking something in my head of oh, that's an interesting way to see it through that entertainment of story. Mm. And then on the other side, I guess of just. Of uh, not sinful entertainment, but not mm-hmm. growing enter- entertainment that grows you. I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, I I think you kind of explained it really well because with a parable, you have a heavenly you know meaning in yeah. an earthly story, and you know you're going. The story isn't just happening for your entertainment. There might be entertainment there, but ultimately, there's a truth. Yeah that is being revealed to you or told through the story that it's supposed to lead you to God. It's supposed to lead you to the knowledge of who Jesus is or some spiritual principle. So I think that's where they missed the mark with that yeah. is there wasn't a real clear pathway exactly. in that scenario, I think sure. to some kind of truth. Yeah. Um, if anything, it was more of a distraction to yeah. oh it was definitely think, a distraction and it became and a distraction it became a massive distraction and became a story yeah a national story a national story i think yeah. so is it root concerns entertainment in the church i think at its best it is what you said it will have a direct correlation to the message of the yeah. gospel or whatever book of the bible or truth you're trying to bring out the entertainment uh, will point to that but i also think there's a place for entertainment where it's more about a community building and being building yeah. a place for belonging because, you know, Christians can often be seen as people that are, are boring or you know, really yeah. uptight. Uh, and I think it is good to have a place like, I mean, for example, we're as a church doing a baptism barbecue event. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. In June. So we're doing the baptisms, but we're also going to have a barbecue and we're you know going to have some games that people can play out on the lawn and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's great. Because the church is a community, and when you're doing life together uh, with people and you're in relationship with yeah. them, you're just you're going to do fun things together. And I think the church should be known for being people of love, being people yeah. of joy, being people that could have fun together. Uh, the problem is when the fun either distracts from or uh, takes priority over yeah. the truth that is being. Uh, or is it supposed to be being shared? And I, I think even the order of the conference, not only the thing itself of the dude taking his shirt off and doing the dancing on right. the pole, but the fact that that was the opening event. Yeah. That's also a little concerning to like, me. Like, hey, we need hey, to get, that's where we're going to lead with. We're going to, we need to get people's attention in some way. So we're going to do this. Like, instead of saying, no, the intention, getting people's attention is getting their attention toward Jesus. Yeah. Also, one thing I would add to is now I'm thinking about it like, Entertainment could actually be a form of worship for sure, right? Yeah, sure. Like using your gifts, yeah. Um, looking at and admiring and and just being in awe of creation—that's a form of entertainment, right? Yeah. I mean, going outside, going for a hike, doing like that's those are entertainment things. Oh, um, 
So I, I mean, think like that's even, even like in church. We, did, we, we like weren't that. able to do it, but we made it a movie theater, right? Yeah. Which is filled with it's entertainment. Yeah. Right. And I wanted us to, uh, to do like a Super Bowl party at right. one of the uh, theaters and they wouldn't let us do it because of licensing things, theater yeah. and the Super Bowl and all that stuff. But like, I would have thought that'd be super cool. Hey, come to church Sunday morning and then we're all just going to watch Super Bowl together. Yeah, one of that's the, the community aspect. And fellowship and have fun and invite your friends that maybe normally wouldn't go to church. Yep. And we'll just hang out with one another. And like, you know, they can belong before maybe they even go to church. And, and that's actually kind of see the loving relationships with the community. Yep. But yeah, the whole just, hey, watch it and like a show type of thing. That's yeah. also fine too. But it's just, yeah, the, that specific one that we looked at, it was just, it was just weird. Yep. Yeah. It was just weird. And I would say the community, I mean, that's, that's one of the first things God did with us in the garden. He walked with Adam. Yep. Yeah. They, were having, they, were God, they were entertaining each other. Yep. Yeah. And I also just don't think that churches, at least in other parts of the world, have the luxury of doing those kinds of things. Like it's Definitely. a very American thing. And what do you think about the things of that. like, yeah, it is. And what do you think about like the plays? Like the oh, reenactments? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at best, the reenactments of nativity and all that stuff. But then also, I mean, that's definitely more justified than that guy for sure. Great. But then what about like, have you seen, have you <laughs> seen, chosen, like think about the chosen, yeah, yeah. right? The show. If you, if you don't know what I'm talking about and you're listening, the chosen is a show. I highly recommend you watch it. It's a multi-season TV show yeah. of the life of Christ. And actually they announced today that season four is going to be released in four to seven weeks. Oh, so finally so for that. Finally. Okay. But what about the, the, sh- the plays that churches put on? I don't know if you've seen the videos, but yeah. like they did the crucifixion through the story of toy story or through the story of oh. the Avengers. See, that so literally Iron to... Man is up on the cross or Woody is resurrecting. Yeah. And it's, that's... they just replace that one. Inner... That's irreverent Two, It's <laughs> yes. super cringe. Very cringy. It's so very cringy. cringe. I don't even understand. That's when the purpose. It's like you got church and you have the culture. Yeah. You want to relate Christ to the culture but without conforming Christ to the culture. And when you start mixing the story of Christ with the toy story yeah. or Marvel or whatever, and you do these weird plays where you're trying to like, you know, Iron Man is like Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it's like, it's just, it's weird. It's it awkward. Is weird. And I just, yeah. it's, I don't think, I it, think that's stepping outside. That's why using so many people think Christians are weird. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And I, I out of touch with the culture and I get, Oh, you get, you got this gift of, I don't know, telling a story through your body and acting, but use it another not way. way. Not like that. I really, yeah. That's yeah. called a misuse of gifts. It is. And that type of entertainment does not belong in the church. I wouldn't no. say that. Well, I, I wouldn't even say it's entertainment. It's just a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You're just like, <laughs> it misses the mark. Yeah. And I, I think you said it too. It's like, actually, reverence. it's entertainment for me because I just laugh at it. Well, it's yeah. so funny to see. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't yeah. believe the church would do this. Well, and <laughs> that's what the thing that I don't like about it is, is what you said, the irreverence, like yeah, there's yeah. not a, a sense of reverence to God yeah. anymore. It's, you're going to men's conference. You're trying to maybe equip men mm-hmm. with the word and with worship and community. Like just let the good stuff be the main thing. Like well, just yeah. let the word of God speak for itself. Yep. Let, the gathering of believers be power, power like the thing that people are attracted to like when we try to sugarcoat things so that we can look like the culture it and and then you miss it so far off because it's like the culture is not even doing that kind of stuff yeah right like it just is weird speaking of the good stuff yes. speaking of the word of god the word of god and letting that speak for itself rather than trying to entertain men like their little children in a youth group <laughs> We were talking about the word of God this Sunday and how to grow through God's word. What yeah. were your thoughts on that? What were your thoughts oh. on what I said on Sunday? No. Jeez. Yeah. This, no. You test I, us. I, I, I want us to, you know, go deeper because there was honestly, I was, I was telling you this earlier today, but I was having a conversation after church on Sunday with a few guys. Shout out to Nick and Cameron. If you guys are listening, I love you guys. But we were kind of talking about the Bible and just growing through God's word. And it just came to like my realization. I'm like, wow, there is so much that I talked about in the sermon, but there was also so much left unsaid. And so I think there's a lot for us to. Can I read a a verse from Sunday? Yeah, please. Um, In second Timothy chapter three says this, 
how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in christ jesus all scripture is god breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of god may be thoroughly equipped for every good work mm. i love that one of my favorite verses yes about god's word yes yeah i think one of the key things there in that verse is it talks about how all of scripture is god breathed meaning every page on scripture is actually has god's imprint on it right that he actually has created this book through the power of his holy spirit while using human beings and the bible isn't man-made although god used men and women to make it but it's actually primarily god's book it's god's word yes Uh, but with that being said just because all scripture is god breathed does that mean that all scripture is is easily understandable and this is something i didn't talk about on sunday Mm. so i want us to maybe talk about that first okay so all of god's uh, word is is god breathed it's it's important, right? He's saying that all scripture can be useful used to be uh, in equip you for good works, to correct Teaching. you, to teach you, all of those things. Yeah. But let's be honest here. All right. Uh, the third chapter of John is a little bit easier to understand than maybe perhaps the 16th chapter of Leviticus. So yeah. let's go into that. What are your guys' thoughts on that? How is it? What's kind of the tension there between those two truths and that all of scripture is God breathed, but not all scriptures is easily understandable? Yeah. What are your thoughts there? I mean, I think that's what makes it so incredible. And so, um, I mean, the Bible is really the only book that you could study for your whole life and still every day be able to find something else in it. Um, I think it's purposely designed to be that. Um, I don't think just like parables, as we kind of brought up before, there's surface level. Then there's a second level, third level, yeah. and then it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. I mean, there's so many different facets of scripture. Um, and one thing I was actually going to ask that <clears throat> you didn't talk about, and we, we mostly talk about scripture as like instruction. You kind of said some people look at it as an instruction manual, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it also is... There's that um, acronym that Christians always say, Bible is basic instructions for something like that. I yeah. It's like an yeah. acronym. But. Yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> one thing that I... <laughs> have really um, been focusing on lately yeah. in scripture is the story of it and how yes. um, it's a story of a God creating and then uh, coming after his children mm. through Jesus. And you also mentioned this though, Jesus is on every single page of the Bible, yep. right? Yep. Um, I mean, well, and if yeah. you only read the Bible, as, as, as it relates to you practically. Right. If you only read it, not as a narrative, as a story, mm-hmm. but as how does this apply to my life immediately? Now, a lot of it does apply to your yeah. life. Yeah. But if that's the only way you see it, yeah. and that is the only lens by right. which you look through those lens to see it, then you're going to uh, misinterpret it. Right. Yes. Because you're not going to be asking the question, who is the writer? Yeah, context. Who right? did they Time write place, this to? Setting. Um, where does this fit within the story of yep. scripture? You're not asking all of those interpretive questions. All you're asking is, is what does this mean to me now? Exactly. And if you just insert yourself into every part of the story, uh, that's going to be really, really confusing yeah. really quick. Full religions have actually been built off that. Yeah. Right. False religions. Exactly. Have been built off that exact practice. Yeah. Exactly. And so when, trying to understand the Bible or interpret the Bible. Yeah. Uh, you really have to start not with now. Do you want to get to this question of what does this mean to me? Yes. That is where you need to eventually land. And the problem is, is some people, they never land there. Right. They only want to ask the nerdy questions of oh, who wrote this, who'd they write it right. to? Where's this within the story of scripture? And they want to nerd out and get into the Greek and the Hebrew of it. Yep. But then they're all intellectual, but not experiential. Right. So they don't ever ask, what does what this mean for me? Yeah. And I think, uh, or they all, don't know how to translate biblical truths into principles and practical handles that people can use for their life. Well, and that's why there are people that can, they could have every book of the Bible memorized and they could have yeah. verses memorized and then have terrible marriages Yeah, or have uh, terrible relationships at work. 
or be crippled by anxiety because they've asked all the theological questions, but they haven't asked any of the practical questions. Yeah. But then you have other people that only ask the practical questions, but they never ask the theological questions. And so God just becomes this psychiatrist where it's always all about you and how do you feel and how can I make you better? And you tend to kind of not really see the whole right. scope and story yeah. of scripture. Right. And I think too, that with biblical interpretation, it can be overwhelming for somebody who's first picking up their Bible, but it's also really exciting as you start to realize that as mentioned before, that the Bible is intertwined, that it's yeah. interconnected. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, uh, you know, the book of John is this standalone within the Bible, the book of John and you mentioned Leviticus and the other books of the Bible, they're interconnected. Mm -hmm. So the, there are, different authors but these authors are all being informed by god and and they're being led by the holy spirit to tell the story of god to the people of god and so that's what makes it so beautiful is that there is this one story throughout time that the bible yeah. is telling and different parts of history yeah from different voices and perspectives and a part of understanding the Bible isn't going, how can I grab this and throw this into my context? It's building a bridge over to yeah, what is happening important. in their context, Build the bridge. understanding it, and then walking that meaning over to where you're at there. But a lot of people, what they want to do is they just want to take it at face value and then insert it into their whatever their situation, life, whatever situation they're in. Yeah. And that happens all the time. That's how you misapply mm -hmm. the Bible. That's how you get, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me yes. on every sports team. Yeah. yeah. Yes. When, yeah, the context there yeah. in Philippians four it's, verse it's about 15. enduring and like suffering. Yeah. And, and, and like, like death stuff. Like and go, I can go, I can go through anything. Yeah. yeah. I can. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not about yeah, yeah, you being able to exactly. lift up a bus or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. or, or, or we can score five touchdowns. Five. I can bench it. I can, you know, we can beat the lions guys. I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe you I can could. do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah say all yeah. things True. but again but i think that's level one right i think the first okay yeah. he's talking about what you guys just said suffering he's talking yes. about whether i have much like a lot of money or no money he's like i've learned to be content right i'm content yeah. whether i'm suffering or not suffering rich or poor i can do all things through christ who strengthens well, me i, I think we're, that way yeah. yeah a really good example of this is when i say the phrase where were you on 9 11 what do you no seriously what do you think yeah, yeah. what do you think yeah the the twin towers yeah you think the the twin towers yeah like you think about where you were that day yeah people people that are in our context understand what that's connected to right but if you go back a hundred years from now and yeah. you said where were you during 9 11 no one would understand that context because exactly. they're not in our culture and they don't know what that means. Right. It's the same way with the Bible is if you just take something as face value, you're going to misinterpret it every day of the week. Yep. So that's why we go into a deeper level of what yeah. is actually being said by when the authors and what they're about, thinking. You want to, you want to know what they're thinking as yeah. they're writing and who they're writing to. And in the context it's, like you just said, who they're writing to. So that would be yes. kind of more historical context. But on top of that, there's also what is called textual context, right? Yes. So when you're reading the Bible, what I'd encourage you to do, like there might be a verse that stands out to you and that's great. And if you want to memorize that verse or meditate on that verse, which we're going to talk more about meditation on God's word more later in this podcast, I'm assuming. But before you take that one verse, read that verse within the whole context of the chapter, within the whole yeah. context yeah of the book within the whole context of the story of scripture. And as you do that, you'll be less likely to kind of cherry pick it or misunderstand it, but you'll be able to interpret it and actually understand what the author was actually trying to communicate yeah. rather than you just reading that one verse or statement in isolation, which can be really problematic. And one practical question I want to ask you, yeah. and I'm now thinking, cause you said when you went to lunch, mm -hmm. um, who, uh, which one? Which, Nick, Nick and Cameron. Yes. But was it Nick or Cameron that said they had... Um, oh, yeah, with the they, Bible. With the Bible, right? They're yeah, trying Bible to... in one year. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, which is so common, by the way. And they said they were having some sort of, you know, like, oh, sometimes it's hard to understand, right? Yeah. Um, do, what do you think about translations? Because we're talking about uh, textual... That's a good question, yeah. It's important, right? We're talking about 
uh, you know, you want to have textual context. You want to have definitely the uh, setting <laughs> and, and translations. That's Kidding. their whole goal. Sarcasm. The whole goal yeah. of these translations is yeah. do we want to try to give it word for word direct translation yeah. or do we want to try to add our cultural context yeah. with their cultural context so that we can actually understand. And right. that's what translations are trying to do. So would you say that's an important thing to first I, I know which translation a, you're reading? There's a lot of there's good translations. So many good translations. And I think there's some bad ones. Yeah. But I think in, in, yeah. in, in large part, I think a lot of the more popular ones are solid. I would say if you're just starting out and reading the Bible for the first Ooh, time. I'd King say, James. Yeah, well, yeah, totally. King James. There's uh, I would no say other go with the NLT or the NLT. accurate Bible than the King James Bible. If you're just starting out reading the Bible, I encourage you get it a good NLT or NIV study Bible. Sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah study good. Bible will have some of the notes in the bottom or yep. some scholars, you know, they give some explanation on some of the verses. It's not God's word. It's some scholar, but still it's helpful in, in yeah. helping you understand some verses. I think the NLT and the NIV do a really good job if you're just starting. If you want something that's maybe a little bit more literal, you can look to the ESV yeah. or the NASB. Those are kind of the main ones I would I would kind of yeah. look at. Anything yeah. else beyond that? There's some other solid ones, but those are kind of the best ones that I, I, I would say. I was raised on the NIV, so that's the one I read the most. But I read the ESV a lot too, and yeah. the NLT too. Yeah, it's good to kind of mix it up. And- I, I love ESV. That's what I've been reading the last few months, and I think it can get a little disjointed at times, just because they're technically more of a literal translation. Like a word for word translation. Word for word yeah. translation. Um, but, you know, all of these popular ones like NLT, ESV, NIV, and the like, they're just using, they're try, their goal is to use modern language to convey the meaning of the passage, right? And I think NLT, like, is a great beginner and a lot, a lot of if you're just starting to this, read the Bible, I think yeah. that's one of the best. Yeah, it is. Books. Like, a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of the um, same scholars have worked on various yeah. translations. Yeah. Like D.A. Yeah. Carson, who's one of the best scholars in the world, yeah. he was a really big part of making the in an ESV translation, which is a more yeah. literal translation. And yeah. then I'm pretty sure he was like one of the main people in charge of the NLT translation. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, and it's not like they're that different. They're really not they are. that different. The NLTs, but the NLT is easier to read. More it's easier to read because the you know the way that they organize sentences in Greek and Hebrew, they just organize them in in different orders than we organize yeah. sen- sentences yeah. with the way that they arrange the words. And so the NLT tends to rearrange the words uh, m- more so that it makes sense in English and ESV since they're not rearranged yeah. the sentences. There's a lot more run-on sentences more literal, so there's in some the more, ESV. Yeah, there's more run-ons and whatever. Yeah. So NLT just makes it a little bit more adaptable and understandable for someone in the English language. Yeah. Um, sometimes you lose a little bit of the meaning by doing that, and sometimes you gain some of the meaning because yeah. it's easier yeah. to read and interpret. So it's just, I think it's reading a little bit of both. I mean, most Christians aren't going to know the original Greek and Hebrew. I mean, with the tools online today, you could look it up a little right, bit, totally. and that's cool. But for most people, I think a solid NLT, NIV, ESV yeah. translation, get a good study Bible with some notes on the bottom and that. Sure. That I think that's you. good too. I've been reading the Gen Z Bible translation oh, and it yeah. is, oh, it's actually powerful. probably the best. Is that that's the Bible powerful. where they go, uh, it's like an angel. God came. gave them and it gave them the bread and the bread was lit and yeah. like, yeah. That's and Ma- and the angel appeared to Mary and was like, on God, you know, <laughs> you're going to have, a, you're going to have a savior. <laughs> that's awesome. And Mary was like, who me? So that I'm goes back to girl. what we were talking about at first, entertainment and Christian <laughs> yeah. and reverence and yeah. exactly. all that. So stuff, yeah. maybe we can <laughs> give some more practical handles on how to read the Bible like every day. Well, how about this? interact with scripture? What if we start with, let's, let's talk to different types of people here. I want to hear what you guys think. Yeah. Somebody that's just now starting to read the Bible for the first time, or maybe it's been a really long time yeah. since they read the Bible. Where would you tell them to start? And then maybe somebody that maybe wants to go deeper and has been around for a while, where would you tell them to start? So or the guys, person who, and then I'll, I'll give my answer about who has gone start. deeper, but it's stale right now. And yeah. they are struggling with how they're interacting with God through his word. I think it was Mark Driscoll talked about this. I saw a clip and he said, we're bringing it full circle. I know. Well, he had, it was really good, straightforward, just advice. And he said for, if you're just now getting to read the Bible, read the gospels. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. read them thoroughly, really soak those in. Yep. Those are the easiest to read. Yep. It's the main thing. Um, yeah. you get, you get the Jesus story yeah. right there and then move on to the rest of the new Testament. And then when start throwing in the old Testament and look for, yeah, look for those connections from the old Testament to the new Testament and read with the context of like, again, that old Testament is telling the story that is leading towards the gospels that is yep. leading towards the story yeah. of Jesus. If you, if you read, I'd say that's the biggest thing after you do the whole new Testament stuff, when you go back to the old Testament, and you feel a little bit more comfortable, especially for new believers, read it through the lens of how is this pointing towards Jesus? Because when you're looking for it, it's so mm-hmm. obvious. It's yes. so prevalent. Yeah. My, one of my favorite parts of the gospel too is after Jesus's resurrection and he's on the road. Uh, uh, road to Emmaus. And, Emmaus and, yeah, and, Luke. and, and he encounters uh, those two men yeah. and, and he explains to them where he's at in the Old Testament, basically. He explains mm-hmm. to them and you know the old testament is harder to understand generally than the new testament especially for somebody who maybe is newer in their faith but jesus preached the old testament yeah jesus treated the old testament like it was the word of god we believe that is the word of god um and so there's just there is a lot of power in there and it takes a little and and a lot of different parts of the old testament it might take a little bit more to get to uh, what does this mean for me? Yeah. But when you get there, it's really powerful. And also, and more importantly, when you see how it connects to Jesus, it just will blow your mind. Yeah, no, it will. And I'll echo what you said too, Dakota. I would even just say, um, zeroing in on the gospels, I'd say just start with the gospel of John. That's Ooh. a great place to start. To actually disagree and with then, that. Um, and then from John, <laughs> go to Romans. And then from Romans, go Ooh. to Acts. Those are, the, uh, or sorry, I'd go with John, Acts, and then Romans. Because then in those Acts, three books, because you're getting Jesus and the Gospels, yep. um, especially if you just start with John, you get a lot about Jesus there. Theologically. I just feel like John yeah. chapter one might be, is a little confusing to new believers. That's my only, everything else in John is like. Wait, really? why? Because when he starts within the beginning, when in the, the beginning word, was the word. Was right. the word was I feel like that's confusing because it's kind of people. Trinity stuff or well, what do you mean? I mean, it's, there's a lot of theology there. Like it's a lot of there deep is. theology, but I, I, I like feel John. like John, John, I do like John really, though. I think it's a great entry point for most people. Listen, you could have a different opinion. What gospel would you have them start with? <laughs> Luke or Matthew. Okay. Or even um, Mark. Cause Mark is super you fast. Know what? How about this? And easy to read. You could say Luke because Luke, Luke and great. Acts are very detailed, one, are technically one book. Luke is part yeah, one, and yeah. Acts is part two. Yeah. So you could start with what Griffin would prefer, Luke, or what <laughs> yeah. I would prefer, John, and then I'd say go to Acts because I'm biased because I did just read God. Luke recently. So okay. I think well, that's well, Luke is great. Yeah. I mean, Luke has Luke 15, the story of the prodigal mm-hmm. son. A lot of the most famous parables are in Luke. John is typically less, uh, less kind of Details highlighting the parables yeah. and he's more, he's more ethos focusing yes. on Jesus, like interactions with people yeah. and yes. like theology and mm-hmm. kind of John is called the Maverick gospel. A lot of times you have yeah. the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And there's yeah. a lot of overlap between those three. Mm-hmm. John has a lot of information that the other gospels don't have. Yeah. And he calls himself the beloved disciple. And it's mm-hmm. almost like he's saying, Hey, I'm his beloved one. Like I'm yeah. the I one was that was Jesus really close favorite. to him. Yeah. I'm going to give you all the information that these other guys didn't give you. And so I just, I love John. I, I love, love his it. style I, of writing. I, I love it too. And uh, it just, it's beautiful. So I think yeah. if you start with John or any of the other gospels, you get a lot about Jesus and then acts, you get the story of the early church, which is really helpful. And then Romans is basically the summary of all of the Apostle Paul's theology yeah. that you'll find in pretty much any of his other letters, uh, whether it's Galatians or Ephesians or First and Second Timothy or whatever. Um, he wrote more New Testament letters than anybody else. And in Romans, he basically yeah. summarizes all of it. So if you just get those three books, yeah. one of the Gospels, Acts, and Romans, that's a really good base for the uh, New Testament. Yeah, and I would, you know, if you're, if you're going to jump into the old Testament at any time, I would just start in Genesis. Yeah. Go right into the beginning, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Hop right in. Um, yeah. What about you, Dakota? What do you think? What are your thoughts? I yeah. mean, new believer. Yeah. 
Yeah, or new. Or maybe we can switch over to somebody Wait, call, else. You're saying I'm a new believer. <laughs> you're you're kind of you're, you're kind of into this last. Week. You're you're no, immature well, in your yeah. faith, right, brother? I mean, you're pretty <laughs> right, brother. In the faith. You already kind of said the gospel. You already kind of said the gospels. I mean, yeah. do you add anything else, or maybe should we shift in talking to somebody um, that's a, maybe been a believer for a while? Yeah. Um, let's shift into because I think you guys covered it. I yeah. don't think I would add anything else. I'm trying to think. Um, maybe revelation. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. No. Um, yeah. I, maybe, uh, reading the fall, like just the first part of Genesis. Yeah, Genesis. Yeah. Cause then you get one the context of why Jesus had to come. Maybe yeah, Genesis one to three. Is yeah. Really maybe starting with that. Yeah, That's exactly. It's huge. the foundation. It's the reason why yep. that those other books are happening. So maybe add in that. I yeah, might say that's that. good. Yeah. What would you say, Griff, to a believer that's maybe been reading the Bible for a while, but maybe it's gone a little stale or they're looking for ways to maybe just level up and grow in their faith? What would you say? Mm. Yeah, I, I think finding ways to not just read the Bible, but to interact with scripture mm. and to meditate on the word. So not just reading it, but filling your mind and memorizing it and having it in your heart um you know you can read god's word all day but if you don't comprehend it and internalize it and use it as a as a means of guarding your heart and the deposit of your salvation it's meaningless like you can just read to read or check a box at any day and i've done that in times where i'm just like Mm -hmm. i remember when i read when i went through reading the bible in a year when I was in college, I, there were a lot of days where I'm just like, okay, I just got it done. Like yeah. I check. Yeah. And it's really easy to do that when you've been interacting with scripture for whatever amount of time. Mm-hmm. And so I'll just encourage you, like maybe it isn't six, seven chapters you're reading a day. Maybe it's one chapter and instead of, or maybe you are still reading a lot but you're actually memorizing and meditating and thinking and praying about the truths that you're reading about and so i think a lot of times when it mm-hmm. becomes stale is when it becomes a checkbox yeah. when it becomes just something that you're doing so you can feel good about yourself rather than discovering the truths that god has for you and knowing yeah. that like like paul tells us it's, a, it's alive and active sharper than any double-edged sword you share that scripture on sunday i love that scripture because it's just a great reminder that you know the word of god is the only book in the world that is truly alive that it's truly active and is able to speak to us all at any place in time Mm -hmm. and you even said this last sunday is that it's like it's able when you read it it reads you almost it reads your mail right and uh, that couldn't be farther from the truth because I mean, that can be any more true yeah. is that like every time I'm reading the Bible, I'm actually in it and I'm engaging with it and I'm treating mm-hmm. it like it is the word of God sharper than any double sword alive and active. I actually hear God speak mm-hmm. like God wants to speak to you today. And the oh, main I way is through yep. his word. And I think I just encourage you if maybe reading the Bible's gotten stale for you. Pray before you read. I've never I've regretted lo- it. I've loved <laughs> just, even if it's a short prayer to God, yeah. just saying, God, as I read, can you just speak to me and be real to me? Yeah. He will answer that prayer. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we could kind of rush into it, the reading, rush into just trying to get it done and go into our day. But just pause just for a few moments and just take a deep breath, slow down your day and just say, okay, Holy Spirit, speak to me through your holy word. Yeah. And then just pause for a moment. And then get into the word. And as you do that, I think that he'll begin to speak to you more. But you already touched on this a little bit, but the idea of not just memorizing, but also meditating mm-hmm. on God's word. I've noticed that if you just read God's word in a cursory way and you kind of just, what you're doing is you're just scratching the surface. Mm-hmm. Okay, so like say uh, I read, let's say Psalm 23, a classic chapter in the Bible. And one of the verses says, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay, I read it. All right, checkbox, done. Mm-hmm. Right, and I just go along my day. And I don't even think about that. But say I take 15 minutes and I just sit down mm-hmm. in a chair and I just think about that and I just breathe and I just go, okay, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I, I have all that I need. And the NIV says, I have all that I need. And you just think about that. Okay, what's a shepherd? 
Oh, a shepherd's a, a person that cares for their sheep. They guide and they provide for their sheep. Oh, I'm I'm his she- I'm mm-hmm. his sheep. He's my shepherd. Okay, God, would you guide and would you provide for me today? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's my shepherd. I I have all that I need. Oh, God, there's so many things in this world yeah. I feel like I need. I feel like I need more money. I feel like I need a relationship. I feel like I need this or I need that. Lord, help me to know that with you I have all that I need. And you just begin to pray through the scripture. You begin to meditate on the scripture. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, as you marinate in the scripture, as you meditate on the scripture, Mm -hmm. it will literally change the composition of your character. Yeah. And it becomes more exciting Mm -hmm. because you're not just reading God's word. You're interacting with God's God's word and you're actually having a conversation with God himself. And that's what I love to do when I'm reading the Bible is having a conversation with God. Okay. He's speaking to me and saying yeah. this, God, now in prayer, I'm going to talk back to you and yes. say this in response to that. It's good. I think a lot of times reading just becomes this one way conversation. You're just hearing God, yeah. but no, let God hear you speak back to him. And then he'll speak mm. back to you again. Have it be more conversational in nature. Mm. Uh, so that's one thing I'd say, but I'd say another thing too is like, um, I've been reading the Bible for a really long time and there are certain books that I just love to go back to. Like I already mentioned the gospel of John. I go back to the gospel of John all the time, Yeah, but also sometimes maybe explore uh, a book that you're not as familiar. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Challenge yourself, stretch yeah. yourself. I've never read the book of Zechariah that much in depth. Okay, fine. Yeah. If you've never read the it's book of Zechariah, there. there's a lot of good stuff in Zechariah. Right. Go read it and check it out and you will be challenged. Maybe buy a commentary on the book of Zechariah and read that along with it in your that's devotional a, and maybe yeah. grow in ways that you've not grown before. You know, and I love that thought too, is become an expert in one book. Yeah, I like, love that. Spend time yeah. and be an expert in one book and read about it, listen to other sermons on it, um, and go go deeper mm-hmm. in that one book. And and what you'll find is like, again, we're talking about how interconnected scripture is, is the deeper you go into the well of one book, it actually opens up avenues into other books yeah. because um, God uses... God uses one passage to speak to another. And that's why a lot of times you hear good preaching, you know, you're not just making a point through one scripture, you're using other scripture to supplement Mm -hmm. that one truth because God, God speaks in more than one way. You know, he's, he's said his truth in more than one Avenue. So one of the things I loved when we grew up going to our church and pastor Steve, we all had the same pastor growing up and, you know, he would preach through books of the Bible. And I loved, as a teenager, when I was just, you know, we were as a church going through books of the Bible, I'd love to read ahead, and I'd love to read back into what he'd yeah. already preached on, and I would read the whole book before, you know, we'd finish preaching through it, and I'd be like, oh, there's this verse I have a question on, or this verse I really like, I can't wait to see what Pastor Steve has to say about yeah. it. And, you know, we're, as a church, about to go through Romans again, we'd already gone through Romans chapter 1, verse 8, and if you're a part of Arroyo, or maybe you watch our sermons online, or you attend in person, I just encourage you, we're going to get back into Romans, starting in Romans chapter 9 this week, and uh, it's going to take us all the way to probably the end of the summer to finish the book. I'd encourage you, become a student of Romans. Read through mm. the whole book. But before we get to the last chapter, why don't you have already read that yourself? And, you know, we already went through chapters 1 to 8. We're about to get into chapter 9. Hey, before we get into chapter nine again as a church, why don't you read chapters one through eight this week before we hop back in? Just don't just let Sunday be your only exposure to Romans. Read it yourself. Buy a book on Romans. Like, right. I hope that I can add a lot of value to your spiritual life and teach you a lot about Romans. Right. But also, I'm not going to be able read to hit yourself. everything. And also, I'm not going to be able to meditate on it for you. You got to do that yourself. Can I say cool. another thing, too, is that for and this might not be for everybody, but I think it might be for someone is that maybe reading isn't for you. Maybe you need to audibly listen to it. Maybe yeah. you need to listen to the Bible. And there are actually a lot of re- really great resources for that. Yeah, go ahead. There are, sure, I great. mean, not just the U version that you can press play and right. it'll read the Bible out loud for you. Uh, but there are also different apps that you can use that will. I think one's know, called like Dwell. I don't know. Yeah, I used to have know. that. And I'd like oh. listen to it like while I'm driving or whatever. Yeah. Um, they got some or just good like readers whenever. Too. Oh, like, I think great they got, like, readers. The guy that was Darth Vader's voice. What's really? so cool that about it too you? is like Heck they'll yeah, be reading dude. in this dramatic voice and then have some instrumentation behind there. And, and some, so it's cool. Rain. Like, yeah, so, so, so for some people, maybe it's a little overwhelming yeah. to like read 
Yeah. And sit there weird. and just, and you're, and you're reading maybe isn't your thing. Yeah. You know, most of the early church, yeah, didn't they read. weren't reading their Bible every day. They were hearing it. They yeah. were from, coming from an oral co- culture. Most people couldn't even read. Yeah. And so they, you know, a church would have one or they just didn't have enough manuscripts. So you'd have one person with a manuscript, mm-hmm. a book from the Bible, maybe it's from the Old Testament or a letter from Paul. And they'd go and they sit there and they'd read it out loud and people would hear it. And so there's nothing wrong with that either. And I think uh, it's an it's the miracle of the Bible and the manuscripts that were circulated throughout the early church. And now today we have the Bible that we see is a miracle in and of itself. And it's amazing that we could even open up mm-hmm. and have God's word so accessible to us. Like that wasn't a thing in mm-hmm. early history. Right. But if you know if you're not a person that like is accustomed to or feels comfortable reading every day like that, like just yeah. There's a there's also another app I really like. So the U version app obviously is great for reading and like you said, you could also have somebody read to you. There's the dwell app, but it's the, yeah. I think just a primarily they read to you. But there's another app called Abide that I really like. It's a biblical meditation mm. app where they will read scriptures to you, but they don't just read like the book of John nonstop to you. But they typically yeah. have one or two or a handful of verses that they'll read and then they'll kind of speak into that verse into your life and then yeah. encourage mm. you to think about That's it. That's great. And I love That's that really app. Cool. Jamie and I, we discovered that app like four or five years That's ago. Really cool. And we used to use it all the time. I still go back to it. Um, What's the Mark Wahlberg app? Again, oh, that's, that's the, the Catholic, that's the Catholic app. The ga- so we're not going to endorse like, that here. The whole stay app. prayed up, stay prayed up, stay, to, stay prayed up. Hey, that up. actually I've heard is a really good app, but um, yeah, yeah, I that's so I haven't cool. used it. Although I would like to pray with Mark Wahlberg. I would I, love. Really? He also, would. I think they did a Liam. They got a Liam Neeson on that app. They've been yeah, pulling some serious celebrities on serious there. celebrities, dude. It's I will find you and I will read you the Bible. <laughs> Catholic dude, Church I'm, is having a little bit of a resurgence. It is recently, recently. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, just a lot of public figures have converted to Catholicism the yeah. last few years. Yeah. I think they, Catholic, everybody is Catholic, basically. Right. All, everybody's Everyone parents were Catholic. That. Joe Biden even says he's a Catholic. Right. Yeah. No comment on that one. <laughs> Getting no political comment. up in here. Sorry. No, it's not political. I mean, he's not. That's just be honest. <laughs> no, it's, it's just, true. A, I mean, I mean, true. let's just be honest. Yeah. Let's yeah. be real. One other thing I would mention too <laughs> is if reading, Oops. like you said, if reading is tough, look, do the yeah. listening part. And I agree with that. I also think like when you were saying, read ahead, read Romans, like some people will read and you still, especially for new believers or Mm -hmm. people who are not as studious in the Bible, I would say, study it, Mm -hmm. right? Don't just read it, but study it. And what that means is look for resources. There's so much out there that talk to you about the context of when that was written, but talk to you about maybe what the author may have been intending. What are some resources yeah. you like? <clears throat> I listen to other sermons yeah. of, of different types of pastors. Yeah. I've listened to, I mean, we talked about like Mark Driscoll and stuff like that, like more on that yeah. side of preaching. I've listened to uh, more studious stuff like Bible project stuff. Yeah. Tim Mackey. I was going to bring that up. I know you yeah. like the Bible project. Yeah. Uh, they just do a great job of the <laughs> context of things. Yeah. Yeah. And illustrating um, it too. Yeah. And, and doing just a great illustration of it. In fact, I would say if you're new, yeah, well there's entertainment parts of it, but they have a full uh-huh. series. They've gone through every book of the Bible where it's they, really it's cool. basically, it's kind of like a forward of each book of the Bible yeah. that you could read, but they, they do it in kind of like a drawing yeah. uh, format. It's and cool. it's actually a really good thing to yeah. watch before you read. Yeah, it's kind of because like, prep. It's like okay, it's kind of prep like out. it gives you yeah, a backdrop. Exactly, of what's this happening. is what just happened. This is yeah, what yeah. the possible like where the author is sitting when they're writing, like stuff like that. It's really good. It's very yeah, I um, like the helpful. Bible project, I recommend them yeah. for sure. Yeah, I would also say uh, Warren Wizardby, who's been dead for a while now, but he wrote um, a commentary on pretty much every book of the Bible. Yeah, and his commentaries are super understandable and user friendly mm. and i'd highly yep. recommend it's called the b series so each book of the bible has a commentary it's like a little book and like nice i think like his ephesians commentary is called like be rich yeah one another commentary is like be faithful like be you know graceful like just but yeah it's his b series and it's really good they're like they read like books they're not like yeah. super scholarly but like you get a lot of good insights. yeah and another thing I, I, I use say, it for my sermon prep. Really? It's one of the commentary series I use. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Like another it. thing I would say too, maybe I don't know if this would be for more seasoned, probably more seasoned, I guess, if you read. 
Another cool exercise is um, reading with the intention of finding out something. So like, for example, God's character, mm. like doing studying to God's yeah, character yeah, like a, and a, a where that's study. kind of shown throughout yeah. the Bible. Yeah, that's right? cool. I think doing stuff like that is also super, super helpful. And just, it takes you out of that repetitive motion of like, I just got to read my Bible. You know, yep. that gives you intention. I, I'll say to use a little me, chat GPT and just, you know, I use chat GPT all just, the time. Yeah. When chat I chat GPT literally can compile now chat GPT is going to mess up from time to time and quote scriptures out of context. I'll correct chat GPT. I've had to rebuke chat like, GPT. Sorry. GPT sorry I actually did make a mistake. I converted here. chat GPT. Yeah. I'm working on it. Uh, no, they don't. He's a Christian. Any, no. uh, religious or uh, philosophical <laughs> or ideological. Yeah, no, they do the, because there's, guess what? People yeah. that made the program and exactly. those people have views. The fathers they of AI. They put that into AI. So don't be deceived. They're not as gray and on the fence as they say they are. <laughs> but with that being said, if you do type in like, hey, give me a list of 20 verses in the Bible on self-control or love. It'll, do it'll it. actually do that. And it's actually really nice. Yeah, it's a great I tool. I actually wouldn't discourage that. I would actually, it's a great supplemental tool. I would encourage that. Um, but you got to read each verse within its context, like we were saying before. Yeah, so exactly. Just because GPT gives you a verse and says it's on something. You got to read the whole context. It. Yeah, read the whole context. But that's like if you're wanting to do a topical study, that's a great way to do it, actually, yeah. I think. Yeah. Another thing that's really helped me the last few months, I kind of started doing this at the beginning or at the end of last year, was journaling. I was never a consistent journaler, um, but I started journaling the last six months or so. And that has been like transformative for me. And I used to kind of, roll my eyes at people that do that or like really um, <clears throat> are into journaling. I just was always like, that's not for me. I'll never do that. Yeah. Um, and then I started doing it and I actually did it with structure and it, it like really changed my Bible reading. What, that's cool. what in what ways has it changed for you? I'm just yeah, so kind of the I'm format, trying to be a good report or follow up. <laughs> yeah. So kind of the format of it is, you know, in my journaling, I'll, did you buy one of those blessed God journals? I did. Yeah. Ruslan? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Oh. It's super cool. Cause, um, each, so it's each day has two pages and, um, I, so I'll read my Bible and then, um, at the top of my journal, it's like, what are you grateful for? Who are you praying for? Like other people that you're praying for. And then what personal prayers do you have to God? And then a uh, memory verse. And then like, what, ha what did you learn in God's word today? And then there's also like an open notes section on That's the cool. bottom right, where you just add other thoughts on there. Um, but what it's really helped me do is like, it's helped me organize my prayers more. So I could actually look back like, man, what was I praying about like six months ago? What was I praying about three months ago? Did God answer that prayer? Did something else happen with that situation? Mm -hmm. um, so that's cool. But then the other part, of, and then it also just like has helped me process things in a better way too with what I'm learning. So, yeah. um, you know, I'm, I'm reading and interacting or studying something and then I'm able to write it down and like go and actually put it in a place where I can look back at it and go, oh wait, I'm in this chapter now. What was I reading yesterday? And look and see. And so I don't know if that would be helpful for you. And you know, I don't do it every day. I do it almost every day. But uh, especially when I have time this morning, I didn't have time. I was like rushed out the door super early this morning. Um, so I missed today. Confession. Well, you know, man shall not but, live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from that. That's heart. right. Oh, so, but, don't be spiritually but, starved. But that's, but you know, that's, <laughs> that's the point. That is my like, sermon. I'm just I, I lo what I love about that is like, that's a, like a discipline that I've created in my life, but I'm not chained to that discipline to where it's like, I've had to even... For some people, maybe you're like, oh, if I don't do my, um, yeah, that yeah. thing, whatever you do to connect to God in your devotional time, then I'm not yeah. connected to God. Well, this is what's so key. It's yeah. not an obligation. It's an invitation. Exactly. It's God inviting you into a relationship with himself. So if you uh, don't spend that time with God in his word or in prayer, it's yeah. you missing out, not God. Yeah. You're the one not abiding in him. And by default, you're not as connected to him. And by default of that, you're not bearing as much fruit. Yeah. But God just invites us to come back when we've missed out on our time with him or we've 
you know, stopped connecting with him as much. He just invites us and wants us to come back to him. But it's never this thing where he judges us or condemns us. He's simply just inviting us to return back to the place. I, we I will say, though, the days that I don't do it, I am more emotionally vulnerable. My fuse is shorter. Yeah, and you know, I've actually noticed that today. That <laughs> makes more sense now. <laughs> Stop it. Especially when we're Stop. having... Uh, we're start having, going uh, off on you. You lashed out on me a few times. No, that's not really? true. I felt well, um, actually, the opposite. relationally of abused. You felt oh, compromised? Geez. No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. He's been wonderful today. Thank you. Go to the next podcast. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> so, okay, so is there any other person or thing that we want to speak to? Again, uh, one, one more last thing on that. Like, again none of us are perfect in our devotion to God. I know it's easy to see no, a person across close. the screen or listen to them and go, wow, they you have thought that at times, or maybe inadvert like subconsciously you think that about some people that maybe you see from afar. You don't always know what people are doing behind doors, but the, the part that matters most in how we devote ourselves to God is our heart posture. Yes. Yep. I just can't say that enough because there have been times in my life where I was doing things for God, but my heart was disconnected. Yeah. And I think our prayer for you and our heart for you and for all of us is to go, oh, man, like I open up God's word so that I can know him. Cause I know as I seek him and knowing him, he transforms yeah. my life. Mm -hmm. I seek God in prayer, not because I'm trying to prove something to God or trying to make myself feel good about my life. I'm, or even to get something from God, I'm doing it so that I may know the one who created me and so that I can be connected to him yeah. and be in his will. So that's our prayer for you yeah. as you seek God and his word. And yeah. And I'll just close with this too. Like there is no growth without God's word. Yeah. Like what we've talked about today is so important. Yes. Like if there is one thing that you could not live your life without, it is yeah. God's word, right? Like I said, kind of jokingly when I was giving Griffin a hard time for not doing his devotion today, but it's true. <laughs> Man cannot live on bread alone, but on every word that comes right. from the mouth of God. The Bible is spiritual food, and without it, you will be spiritually starved and eventually spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. And so make it a priority. Make it a priority to get into God's word right. daily. Make it a priority to connect with him in that way. And yeah. as you do that, one of my favorite verses, it's in Isaiah, it says, God's word will not return void. Yes. In other words, when you read God's word, he will speak to you. Right. And so all you have to do is open it, read it and encounter him. It's not going to be the same every time. Sometimes your emotions are going to be high and low. There's going to be different days, different verses are going to speak to you in different ways. But over a long course of time, if you are faithful to listen to the voice of the faithful one who died for you, mm -hmm. loves you, rose again for you, as you read his word, God's word will grow you. That's a promise. So we hope that this podcast yes. episode helps you grow through God's word. It's good. I love it. I think that's a good place to be. Good. Mm -hmm. See you guys time. next time. See you guys next time. Share. Whenever that is. Subscribe. <laughs> Whenever we're, we're, we're able to put up another pod. Hopefully next week. <laughs> or next year. We'll be or back. Next. We'll be back when we're back. All right. We love you guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs>